Hey, and welcome to the Drep and Stone podcast, a podcast where two friends raise a glass and have a conversation. I'm Nick. I'm Kyle. Kyle! Hey, man. You know what? What? It's still summer. It is. <laughs> I was outside doing yard work yesterday. I'm well aware. <laughs> no. That it is still summer. So, like, in most of the world, August, at least in the Northern Hemisphere, August is a, a, a summer month. Yeah. Uh, at least, I, well, I think in our neck of the woods. Definitely for sure. in our neck of the woods. Well, and it's summer. December's a summer month. <laughs> I was just going to say. So. But most people consider August to be very squarely a summer month. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's it's definitely the end of summer, I feel like. You know, yeah. It's not it's not a burr month. Right. Um, but it's it's towards the end of summer. It's usually school starting back. And yeah. It's kind of the end of the glory that is summer. Correct. Uh, I think in our area specifically, at least here here in Central Florida, school generally starts mid August ish. Right. I know a lot of our uh, northern latitude listeners. School starts generally after Labor Day, so early September. Right. But for me, it's always been like August is that final month of summer. Right. Uh, you're you're transitioning into what you just said, the Burr months. Yeah. So I think that it gives us another opportunity to continue or maybe wrap up the summer of cocktails. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it's it's been a it's been a hell of a, a good time. <laughs> this summer of cocktails. Definitely. I think it's, it's been a great idea. Um, but you know, I, I think looking at this episode as potentially being the last yeah. and, and kind of wrapping this up. All good things must come to an end at some point. Eventually. Yeah. And we need we need to finish it on a high note. Correct. Um I think there's one glaring cocktail I think you would associate with summer that we haven't sure. we haven't done yet. Well, it's, it's been sitting over there in the corner and just like scowling at us for weeks at this point. We made it a, like weeks ago. I don't know if I want that. <laughs> I might make a fresh one. Yeah, I, well, I, I mean, put okay, that over the, there. The idea. Of that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I see what you're yeah, saying. Okay. Yeah, we've been contemplating it. Correct. For correct, sure, we yeah. were saving it for a special so occasion. This actually, we thought about starting. On this particular cocktail. Yeah. And everyone's already read the episode title. It's the margarita. Yeah, we're doing a margarita. But I feel like it's it's a way to end the summer of cocktails. Yeah, agreed. That doesn't mean that we're going to stop doing cocktails, though. No, I think this has definitely like opened me up to the the potential to throw in a cocktail every once in a while. Absolutely. Um, just because like it's a hell of a lot of fun. Well, and that's what we kind of do naturally. You know, people think that, oh, they just drink, you know, whiskey and and stuff and that's not what we actually do i mean i think there was a phase oh yeah for sure certainly for me of that that was 90 percent of what i would drink right rarely ever would i would i come home and, and mix a cocktail but right this experiment that we've had this summer has definitely like opened me up to like wanting to try different yeah you know mixers different liqueurs and different stuff like that and uh, amassing a bit of a collection of things so yeah. it's it's definitely um brought that to the forefront for me and that that's kind of like my preferred thing now is at night at and evening hours mixing up some sort of a cocktail yeah i think for me what i've learned cocktails are, are have a little bit of a farther reach so like your your friends that aren't whiskey people or your friends that aren't beer people or your friends that aren't wine people like they might be cocktail people sure and so like exploring that with other people and making drinks for people what i'm getting at right i think broadens the experience as well because like don't get me wrong i love popping a bottle and pouring something for someone yeah like just a pour right but there's something about that almost ritual and we've talked about rituals before that ritual of like you know combining the things in a glass and shaking it and pouring it there's a little bit of a um kind of show to it in a way yeah and i love that yeah me too and i, th I think it's like um it, it, it's a more personal thing sure it's more like crafted yep it's um, personal it's performative yeah yeah and i think there's something too like you know it's like uh having somebody uh, make a meal for you. Exactly. Having somebody make a cocktail for you. Yeah, it, it is just, there's just more love put into it. I agree. Yeah. Speaking of putting love into it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you want to go make a margarita? Hell yeah. Let's do it. All right. We did it. Margaritas mixed. Hell yeah. Ain't nothing like a good sound of a margarita being mixed. On the rocks. Yeah. Listen. Ooh. Tinkle. <laughs> she took a 
tinkle? No, I, I got I got a little tinkle. All right, walk us through, Kyle, our specs for our margarita. For this specific margarita, I've been I've been enjoying the Dos Ombres mezcal that I've got. Oh yeah, nice smoky flavor to it. Yep. Use that. Use the uh, roughly two ounces of the mezcal to start. Mm-hmm. Uh, added probably about an ounce of Cointreau. Mm-hmm. Added. Um, the majority of a full lime, like it was a kind of a small lime. Yeah, squeezed a, a lime in there, and then um, maybe about a half an ounce of agave syrup. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Gave that a nice firm <laughs> shake <laughs> and poured it into a glass. Yeah. What I love about those specs as a whole is pretty simple. Yeah. Ultimately, a margarita is a simple cocktail. Yeah, should be. But look at the color of this. Yep. The color of a good margarita yep kind of dull like i'm not saying it's not pretty yeah no i mean it it is it's there ain't much to it yeah when you go to some of those restaurants and you get like a bright neon green margarita Mm -hmm. uh, mm. i mean they have their place right as we've already said like really most good cocktails tend to be kind of muted in color yeah because most liquors are muted in color. they're not neon bright Exactly. exactly things man for our margarita, we've used a mezcal versus a like traditional a traditional tequila. tequila. Yeah. Sure. So why make that choice? Uh, I just like the flavor. Yeah. Uh, personally, like to me, the the mezcal still tastes like tequila. Sure. You know, in that air quotes kind of way. Uh, I just, but I just love that smoky yeah. flavor on top of it. Yeah. yeah. Um, it just adds more depth to the margarita. Sure. I feel like. Um, but I do like when I'm making a margarita. Like I'm definitely somebody that I think with all of my cocktails that I've. I've had uh, over the summer here. I like for the spirit to be known. Sure, I like for it to be noticeable and and prominent. Yep. I like the the cocktail to be featuring the spirit. Exactly. I don't like it to be covered up. Uh, you know, in in uh, I, I I like it strong. Yeah. Um. So I think the mezcal specifically helps achieve that. Yeah. You know, so you can actually kind of maybe even add in more. Uh, if you wanted to add in some some juice to this, like like a guava or a like a mango, you know, do a strawberry margarita. Like I think the mezcal is going to help that spirit Agreed. stay forward. Yeah, even even if I am just doing a tequila margarita, like I still I like the tequila to be forward. Yeah, agreed completely. And I think we've I know we said this in an earlier episode, but to me, there's I have two kind of margarita perspectives. Yep, I want like classic. Or I want something like this. Yeah. I, I don't, to me, like, I don't want a, a strawberry margarita. Like, I, I don't want things like that. Yeah. And I honestly will go classic, like, Jose Cuervo. Something like, it's cheap. Some, And the reason being, because I feel like that alcohol stands out a little bit more for whatever reason. Right. I'm not saying it makes the best margarita, but I think, like, it makes, like, that classic. A classic margarita. Yeah, classic yeah. margarita. But what I love about this is that it takes that classic margarita and it yeah. elevates it a little bit. Yeah, it it, it adds a, a depth to it that yeah. is going to fit into my palate. Sure. And a, a mezcal is not smoky in the same way that a, a peated scotch is smoky. It's a different kind of smoke. It is a different kind of smoke. It's more of a burnt, kind of more of a yes. barbecue-y kind of a campfire exactly. note. Where, But I still like it. it. It's something that, like again, fits into my palate. 100%. I can definitely see 100%. where it would be off-putting for someone else yeah. if, if they're like opposed to barbecue so if you don't have a uh, mezcal to barbecue. <laughs> if you don't have a mezcal sense. just grab a tequila use yeah. the same specs and you're gonna be just fine yeah you'll be you'll be all right all right shall we shall we on the nose mm. it smells like a smoky margarita citrusy and smoky freaking love it delicious we, we've opted with a, a half salt half tahine rim here yeah yeah super fancy all Plunk, right i'm plunked a lime wedge down in there yeah i'm gonna go i'm gonna go nothing first because we have a little bit of space on our glass where there's no salt yep. or tahini. All so right. I'm going to go nothing first. Good call. Oh, that yep. is fantastic. Yep. Light, Limey. refreshing. Yep. And there's a, the hint of funk with the mezcal. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. A little, little smoky funk. We like the funk. Yeah, because I think like mezcals, more so than tequilas, and I think it's one of those situations, and again, I know we've talked about this, but all tequilas are mezcals, but not all mezcals are tequilas, and not yeah. all mezcals are smoky. Right. But to me, most mezcals can be a little funky. Yeah. It, and this one specifically to me, it's it's like there's like a barrel note, yeah, 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 uh, that, that goes along with it. And I think it's really kind of impressive that it can hold up in the margarita, and you still can like fill those kind of lesser known or exactly. le- lesser prominent yeah. flavor notes. This is not the best descriptor, but it's like a mezcal isn't as clean as a tequila. Sure, like there's like that, like you said, some barrel notes. There's some like I don't know. It's just not as 
filter, I, mean, I guess. Like I, I don't clean, know. Clean's a great word. Yeah. Like I mean, it it is it is just kind of funkier, little little um more rugged. Yeah. You know, but yeah, it's just not not as pure. Yeah. As maybe that maybe that's it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I I already went for the the regular salt here. Yeah. And what's nice is that salt accentuates the lime nature. Yeah. Mm. And and to me, I don't know if this is your case, but I like a half salted rim mm-hmm. versus a salted rim. Like I, I want like some restaurants you go to and they'll just like pile on the salt or sometimes sugar. Yeah. If you want sugar. I want a half salted rim. That way I can choose what how I experience a sip. I'm I'm that person that like give me all cover the salt. that salt. <laughs> like I don't want to see any rim. <laughs> There's a glass here? Huh? Yeah. No, I just build me a salt glass. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> to me, like, I still can do that because I'll go ahead and take three or four sips and work my way around and, oh, sure. and create a clear Yeah, if I need to. But, like, nah, to me, like, salt is a absolute necessity for the margarita. I don't I, disagree. I've got to have salt. I don't disagree with you. I, the salt definitely makes it. Yeah. I mean, I can still enjoy it. I want that salt because once I get about halfway and I've cleared about half of that rim... I take the rest of the salt that's left on the rim and throw that oh, in the drink. Oh, yeah. Let yeah. that marinate. Yeah. That last sip of the margarita is the best sip because it's the saltiest <laughs> thing. I mean, it's so delicious. <laughs> like, I, I'm I'm working to that moment <laughs> when I'm having a margarita. I'm you working towards that last sip. Everything else before that is just not as good. You just want boozy life. saltiness. Just that, it. Oh, it's so good. <laughs> what about the tahini? I haven't gone there. Let me try it. Like, tahini works so well with with this specifically because the tahini has like a bit of a interesting barbecuey smoky yeah. note also. Yeah. So it does just marriage with this so well. And for those of you who don't know, tahini is I'm pretty sure it's Mexican in origin and it is a, a salt mixed with chilies and lime. It's used on everything these days. Yeah. Yeah. My daughter lives by it. Like, oh yeah. She's gotten to the point where she carries it around with her. <laughs> just a little just, just in case. shaker of tahini. Yeah. Yeah. A little vanilla ice cream. Oh, ooh, on not a bad idea. Ah, yeah. 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 It's, it. it's fantastic. She'll put it on everything. This is a solid margarita, man. Yeah. Not bad. I know we've said this multiple times throughout the summer, but this screams summer. Yeah, it, like the margarita is a quintessential summer beverage. Yeah, and and we would have been wrong to not include it. Yeah, in Agreed. the inaugural Agreed. summer of cocktails. But yeah, and it's it, and it's such a diverse cocktail too because you can really have fun like playing around with your specs. Yeah, trying different tequilas and and just messing around with it and seeing what you can create out of it. It it's. It's always going to be good, though. Yeah. I, I've got a, a quick margarita story. Okay. So of all the things that Scotland did well for me this summer, and we're going to talk about travel in a couple of weeks, um, I had margaritas on three different occasions in Scotland. Wow. Not a damn one of them was good. Wow. I would say next to terrible. <laughs> Man. That's bizarre. Oh, yeah. It, they were like... What was, the, what was the issue, do you think? Part of me wants to do that, like, you guys just never have had a good margarita mm-hmm. kind of thing, which I don't... Think is the Surely truth. That's not, that's the, case. not yeah. the case. But like for whatever reason, I mean, like one, two were at like Mexican restaurant. Like mm. they disappointed. Wow. You yeah. think it was like a pre mix kind of a thing? I think the the specs were just off. Maybe it was like a maybe the lime juice wasn't like super fresh. I don't know if they were using real limes. Right. But like the three that I had were just garbage. Not good. <laughs> huh. So get your crap together, Scotland. Yeah. I mean, when when someone wants a margarita, for sure. But you, you know, know, I guess if you're in Scotland, and you don't not. get a good margarita. Like, <laughs> I feel like that shouldn't be <laughs> no. a note against them. I agree completely. <laughs> like if you're in Scotland and you get a bad whiskey, okay, yeah. yeah. I had some real <laughs> shitty Chinese food <laughs> when I was in Spain. I'm like, huh? That shouldn't really be that, that upset, right? <laughs> like if you went to China, and you had some bad Chinese. Oh no, food. I'm not. I'm not upset. I'm just like, <laughs> but I, w- what I mean is, I feel like the the margarita is such a ubiquitous drink. Yeah, it's definitely to the level of it's worldwide. Like if I had one bad drink. Nah, that's fine. Yeah, I should be able to go to Japan and get a good margarita. <laughs> really should. Correct. Like it, it's that yeah. kind of a dream. McMurdo Station in Antarctica. You're gonna have a good damn margar- fine margarita <laughs> exactly. right there. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> but in Scotland, nah, no chance, man. <laughs> At least the three chances I took. Huh. Uh, I have a wife that also c- will Should've agree stuck completely to your G and T's. That's exactly it. I knew it. Mm. I, knew it. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe it took you three tries. Well, burn uh, me once, shame on me. <laughs> burn me twice. Shame on you. Burn me three times. <laughs> I'm an idiot. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> I blacked out. I, I love a good margarita. Yeah. And margarita is definitely one of those um, cocktails, too, that'll just it'll just come up. And you know what? You know it'll be great right now? Margarita. margarita. Yeah. It's a great all-around cocktail. Yeah. You can very easily have one. 
you know, mid afternoon, you can have one with lunch. You can, I mean, if you're, you're doing a brunch thing, absolutely. I don't feel like it's an after dinner drink. Yeah. But no, not the, really. Other than that, it's more of an aperitif. It's an all over cocktail for me. You know what I, what I never order at Mexican restaurants? Margarita. Margaritas. Yeah. <laughs> I have a, I have another beverage that I, I prefer. What's that? It's the Michelada. Oh, which is a Bloody Mary with beer? More or less. Yeah. It's more or less just like a, a beer with Clamato, mix. right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Clamato. Yeah. Um that that's 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 always my uh beverage with Mexican Oh, totally see that. Food. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. I absolutely love it. Do you not like anything approaching a Bloody Mary? No joke. No, like I just I can't hmm. And I, I love tomatoes. I love spicy yeah, tomato-based stuff. Yeah, that's, that's kind stuff, of bizarre. But I, I do not like Bloody Marys. Mm. I do not like uh, Micheladas. I, I just... Also, there's a... Um, Have you ever had like one with Clamato and, and like all of it? I feel like you and I did at the Mouse House. Because that, that used Epcot? to be... Yeah, that used to be your go-to. Like, Yeah, I still I love that one there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, it's still really good. I feel like I've tried it, but I, they use Clamato. Okay. I don't know if we got it at the outside... I don't or if we went down into the tequila bar and and got it, yeah, the one down in the tequila bar, hands Lights down, out. yeah, like it, it, I just so much better. I, I think we got the one outside, yeah. And it's just not my jam. Um, I, that I, mean, mean, I get it. That doesn't mean I wouldn't try another one. Yeah, for sure. And maybe it's also because like you know most of the the Bloody Mary kind of mixes are all flat like yeah. there's not a whole lot of flavor you just get like kind of zing zang yeah you get like the the <laughs> muted tomato and like to me like nothing nothing sad than a mute tomato <laughs> nothing more sad than a mute tomato yeah they need to sing <laughs> yeah exactly especially in the summertime exactly. Exactly. <laughs> uh, speak- i want that full-throated <laughs> tomato hold on <laughs> speaking of singing in the summertime yeah did you see what i'm gonna say is like i'm gonna call it a triumph for canada whoa it, yeah. And o that, Canada? No, well, not O Canada. Uh, but that is faux the... Canada. <laughs> faux Canada. Faux Canada. That is the comeback of one Celine Dion at the Olympics. Did you see I that? Didn't, I didn't see it. Oh, my gosh. No, man. we like, were traveling that day of the opening ceremony. Mm-hmm. Um, and I saw I saw that she performed, but I, I didn't... I, I've yet to see a, uh, a playback of it. Like... If you know anything about, not that I'm a huge Celine Dion fan by any means, right. but like if you know anything about her story, like she's, you know anything she, about Nick, <laughs> you a, do know he's a, he's a huge Celine Dion fan. Yeah, my heart will go on. Indeed, it will. Yeah, that's the power of love. Not the power of love. <laughs> that that wasn't was Celine it? Dion. <laughs> but was that what was her her first hit? Was it was the power of love? Was it? It's just it's called that, but it's not, <laughs> it's not Huey Lewis's Lewis. <laughs> power of love. It's yeah, actually, like if you type in power of love, yeah. Huey Lewis is not the first one that comes up. <laughs> it's Celine Dion. It's Celine Dion's okay. Power of Love. <laughs> Pretty sure this was her first number one hit. Nailed it. That's the power of love. <clears throat> not the same song, but close. Anyway, even I, uh, the the it was a <laughs> the dark hearted, stone cold <laughs> exactly. son of a bitch that you are. <laughs> exactly. Can no. appreciate Celine Dion. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> No, like I, I am not a huge Celine Dion fan, but like knowing the, what she's gone through in the last couple of years, um, and, and even before that, but yeah. like the last couple of years has been really yeah. bad with her illness. Yeah. Um, and to see her like get up and stand up and see, like belt out these this song. What What did she sing? Yeah, that's a great question. Was it like a not one of her songs, but just like a? Like I think a, it was a a French song for the. Yeah, for the I, I don't remember exactly what yeah, she said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because honestly, like I had no idea what she was singing, right. but I was like, "Whoa!" Right. And she's standing on the Eiffel Tower, belting out this song. It's like that is incredible. Yeah. Good for you. Yeah. Good for you, Celine Dion. Yeah. Go off, Queen. I think that's what the kids say. <laughs> that's that kind of a thing. Yeah. Yeah. That's what they say. Yeah. yeah. Oh man, she got the riz. <laughs> Skibbity toilet. I'm so something. confused by all of that. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I don't know. I don't know any of it. Yeah, good on her. Yeah, no, s- seriously, like really cool. Yeah. Have you caught any of the Olympics at all? Uh, since we've been back, yeah. yes. Uh, we we've we've been watching some of the events and stuff, and I gotta admit, like, I love the Olympics. I do too. I really do. Like, it's like you know, uh, it's one of those things that like. Uh, you get you get jacked about and you, you get very patriotic and all yeah. of a sudden you get really interested in, in things that you normally don't care anything about. Right? <laughs> why are there so many different types of swimming? I don't know. It should just be you get in the pool and whoever's the fastest is the fastest. But like, yeah, now we're going to do this. We're going to count this. to three and we're, we're just going to go. We're going to swim this way and yeah. then we're going to swim this way and then we're going to try a different way. Yeah. And Close I don't, your I don't eyes. understand Close your it. Eyes. It's like, because we don't do racing. We don't do like running 
like that. Yeah, we you do. Know? 100 meter, uh, 1400 meter. Yeah, and they do that in all of those other swimming ways. <laughs> they do the 200 breaststroke. Right. They do the 400 best. Well, they, they still do that, but then they've got all the different strokes. It's be more like, yeah, we're going to run this way with both our feet. <laughs> then the next time you're only allowed hop. to use one foot. <laughs> and then the next time you're going to run backwards. It just doesn't make sense. Like, you know, just do the freestyle. That's that's my do, do what you want. That's do. my soapbox. Get from point A to point yeah. B. Whoever's the fastest yeah. in the water, <laughs> sure, you get the medal. Yeah, but then and that. Not, but then, but then, it's Katie Ledecky. Yeah, <laughs> you're not wrong. She is Holy fast. crap! Like it's not even competitive. Yeah, watched uh, her last the, night. The it fact that incredible. she was a a full lap basically ahead of just about. Else. Yeah. Wow. Um, no, I, I I I see what you're saying, and I I raise you this idea of. I'm watching the Olympics. Yep. And I feel like I'm watching ESPN 8, the Ocho. <laughs> the Ocho. <laughs> Cuz it's like all of these sports that I, I mean I know exist. Any other time in exactly. a four year like, gap. I don't, I don't I don't ever watch. I watched and okay, so this so today in terms of when this episode releases mm-hmm. is it's a Wednesday. Is is a 7th. Yeah, right. it's a Wednesday. <laughs> as as all Drippin so. Yes, I know it's Wednesday. It's the 7th. Uh the Olympics officially ends the 11th, but like at this point we're kind of winding things down. Like we've got some other stuff. But the other day I watched an entire handball match <laughs> between the Netherlands and Spain, I right. think. I don't care about handball. I've never like I didn't even know uh, like I knew it existed on the periphery, but like I've never watched a handball match in my life. And I'm sitting there watching, I'm like, "Dang, that's pretty good. At this moment, I I don't know what handball and is. And that's like, okay. I, you I don't, don't know if it's to. like four corners. Yeah. That's what I'm picturing in my in my head <laughs> with like but like with a tennis ball. Sure. You know the game you used to play in Yeah, like I, I know like, exactly. Yeah. Like, yeah. That's what I'm picturing. Yeah. I don't know if that's accurate. Well, yeah, no. No. It, it's a uh, it's like a cross between soccer. Yeah. Basketball and lacrosse? Dodgeball maybe? Oh. <laughs> but like on a very small field in a, court in a, in a living room <laughs> yeah <I'm kind laughs> of fake. uh but the ball is like the size of you know you remember those like little um dodgeballs that, like you just hurl at people's faces oh, yeah it's about that size nerfy like, you, yeah a little i don't know is if it's it nerfy, nerfy or if rubbery. it's more like a, a volleyball kind of texture right but like you could very easily palm this ball right it's about that size a little larger than a softball yeah, like a like an oversized grapefruit. Yeah, I've definitely never seen this sport. <laughs> yeah, never yeah, in my life. So, so no idea good. what you're talking about. It was good, man. Like, right. I I loved watching it. Yeah, and that, that's what the Olympics does. Yeah, it's yeah. A, it not only brings people together and countries together, but it allows you to like, I don't give a shit about handball. Right, but it's on, and I'm gonna watch it. Yeah, like here we go. Yeah, handball the 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 summer version of curling. <laughs> correct. Yeah, correct. Maybe, but then like. It also gives you the opportunity to watch things that you know and root for your country or maybe even countries that, like, for some reason you have an affinity for. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I feel like anytime I watch the Olympics, like, there, there's there's part of me that, like, kind of also roots for the home country. Yeah. Just because, like, yeah. I know, like, that, that's that got to be amazing to be at, at your home crowd yeah. and, like, to be able to accomplish the thing. Like, I was watching, um, watching last night, and there was a swimmer that has – I don't remember his name. I apologize, but he's he's won uh, already three golds. And I think two of those were individuals. Um, wow! And he and he's been able to do it in front of his home crowd. Yeah. And like how amazing that was. And like in his post race interview, he he for whatever reason mentioned the fact that like like Michael Phelps never got to do it at the Olympics. Right. On American soil, it was always away from it. And he was just talking about like you know like I look back to the greats and like. It, it would have been so cool for him to have been able to experience this the way At I home. feel right now right. in my country to to do these things is is incredible. Yeah. What I what I love too, and I don't know if you saw any of the the rugby stuff, but I've seen like clips of the oh, ladies, dude. <laughs> that absolute athlete that's on the uh, is it Samoan? Is it black jerseys? Yeah. Oh no, that's uh, that's New Zealand. New Zealand. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah, this she's lady hardcore. Is absolutely amazing yeah. to watch her work. Oh man, what's uh, I can't remember her name. I I know exactly what you're talking about yeah, though. She's doing like the haka and yeah. like Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She is a threat. Yeah. To yeah. me and that's what's cool like so I've recently within the last couple of years really gotten into rugby. Mm-hmm. And I I freaking I love rugby. Right. And I I love that what rugby does 
um, kind of on a a national stage is it enables people to constantly play each other from different nations. Right. And we do this with uh, soccer football as well. But here in America, we don't really have a whole lot of that, but like the rest of the world, like that's such a big part, uh, uh, such a big part of like athletics and sports identity is playing other people from other countries. Right. And that to me is what's so cool about watching the Olympics is that it's not just the same sports that we get here in America. It's not just baseball, basketball, football. It's other sports that um, aren't as prevalent here, but are just fun as hell to watch, right? Like rugby. Right. So, man, I I watched literally every single men's rugby match and every single women's rugby match, and like teams that like I don't care about, right? But I care. Like I, I but choose. The sport is still exactly fun. the sport is still fun, and then you kind of get to choose. Like, nope, we're going for Fiji this time, right? Because maybe they're the underdog, or like I don't know. I just like their uniforms. I just like that one dude right there. Yeah, exactly. He's got, and that's what's got cool a good vibe about him. And then you can also like, yeah, but the U.S. is playing, so like, nope. Now we're going for the U.S. Yeah, or like for me, I really love the Irish national rugby team. Mm-hmm. Like they're they're great. And they play the U.S. I'm like, I don't know who to go for. Yeah, Down here, uh, go team. <laughs> Just whoever wins. <laughs> right, right. I'm happy they won. So like. Obviously, as the American, I'm like, go America. But as the person who likes the Irish team, I'm like, go Ireland. Right. So, you know, right. And, and that's what's so cool about the Olympics is it enables you to do that for sure. The other, the other thing about the Olympics that I really do love though is is it bringing those sports. Like, obviously, in America, we watch football, we watch baseball, we watch basketball. Um, I don't really know why basketball's in the Olympics because <laughs> we don't have football. Right. Do we do we have baseball again? Uh, I know we did for a few years, but then I feel like took, they took it back out. I don't know if they took baseball. I don't, I don't. Like I've always loved the fact about the Olympics, how it highlights these other sports, right. and that you can see it, it. It creates new superstars. Exactly. Exactly. Like you know, the Olympics kind of thrives on it when when there is like a a Michael Phelps type of an athlete that normally doesn't get attention, but like buddy, when you're in the Olympics, like you're it. Simone Biles. Simone Biles. Hussein Bolt. Was yeah, that way? Yeah. Like th- those kinds of like uh, next level athletes that you see do such amazing things that you just normally uh, hear. We just don't see it that often. Yeah. And I, and I think I love that about the Olympics. I love that it finds those people. Right. And like makes them like celebrities. Well, and like uh, your average, I'm going to say your average American, your average American doesn't care about gymnastics. <laughs> but when you've yeah, got, normally. right. When you've got this woman who is just, Head and shoulders above everybody else, which is kind of funny because she's really small. Yeah, she's but small. head and shoulders above everybody else, it's like I actually care about gymnastics. I watched the entire team gymnastics thing with my wife, and it was great. Yeah, and you kind of do like the oh, she messed up there. I'm like, yeah, I could never do that shit. Yeah. Like, I have no <laughs> I've idea. Seen, I've seen so many memes <laughs> yeah. the, the, this go around of like people like sitting there with chips <laughs> all over their chest, exactly. like. I could have done that. I can never. How'd you mess that? I have no like. There are <laughs> there are words that they're saying in relation to her flipping through the air. I have no idea what right. you're saying. It's exactly it. It makes stars. Yeah, and that's so cool. Yeah, love it. And what I love too is it brings it enables countries that maybe don't spend as much money because the U.S. spends a lot of money, uh, and you could argue that that's one of the reasons that the U.S. does really well is that we spend collectively a fair amount of money on these athletes. But then, like, to see countries that represented, they have one singular athlete. And, like, is that person competitive? I'm not sure. Yeah. But how cool is that? Yeah. Like, you get to represent your country. Whether there's 500-something athletes, like, in America, or you're it. Yeah. You're our one athlete. Yeah. Like, that is so cool. I saw a really interesting thing the other day that was, it was what, uh, if you win a medal from different countries how much money you get wow. by making that. Yeah. And like America's actually like quite low. Yeah, yeah. I did see that. Rather low. Yeah. Uh, comparatively to to a lot of other places. Yeah. Uh where there are some countries where if you win a medal, you you're kind of making a fortune. You're making a bank, yeah. Um not not the case in America. Not not the case in a lot of I guess more the the more dominant yeah. if you want to say that. Well I think it's because but, they spend a lot of money on that athlete prior. Right. So like like on their preparation, exactly. Yeah. yeah, things like that. So maybe, maybe that's the kind of balance out. I'm not exactly sure. Yeah, I don't know. I was just it was it was yeah. kind of surprising. I was like, oh wow, like if you want a gold in America, I want to say it was like you, you get like twenty thousand yeah. dollars or something like that. But 
there were some countries where it was like you know seven hundred. Like I saw a million yeah, or yeah. something like that. I was like, wow, wow. yeah. So Man. maybe that's the incentive, and it's just like the kind of reverse for us here in America. The like, yeah, you get some money, but it's like, no, you're representing. And well, and I, I'm sure too. There. Like you know, if you are a Simone Biles, yeah, you're gonna get so much oh, endorsements yeah. and stuff like that that like you're gonna get your payday. Don't even worry about it, right? E- even even if you're just like you know. Uh, I, I wouldn't be surprised. Like, I think our first gold in this Olympics in these games. Yeah, I hate that phrase. These games because <laughs> like they use it so. <laughs> they often use it so in often. These games. Yeah, but uh, if um, the, I think our first solo was in fencing. Oh, wouldn't be surprised if that dude you know yeah. get, gets picked up. A Wheaties box. Yeah, Wheaties, yeah. Nike, like whoever. Sure. Like I'm sure he's gonna make make a good good payday after yeah. that. Yeah, absolutely. But I don't I don't watch fencing. You know. Yeah, <laughs> couldn't what's, what's that? I what's that? What Is that what, like people are like pulling up like. Uh, is it like chain link? Or well, it like... it's it. No, I think it's all board. Oh, um, like privacy fence. But it could be like PVC. It could be wood. Oh, like vinyl. You don't know. Oh, you just you go into it and you're just not. Yeah, they just yeah, they yeah. give you the supplies. It's kind of like Iron Chef. <laughs> they <laughs> <laughs> cast iron. <laughs> Fuck! <laughs> Why did I get cast iron? <laughs> right. <laughs> so I have one. I have one. Qualm, if you will. Okay. I mean, uh, among others, but I have, I have one. Big, <laughs> I know you. Yeah. You got more than yeah, one. I do. Qualm. I do. But I, I have one thing that one I, I think qualm. prevents the Olympics from. I don't want to say like being even bigger, but at least that for they me, don't have the car punching. Event. Well, they did. They took it out this year. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, for me, it's that up until this. <laughs> this games, Kyle. Up until these this, games. These, these games, games. Up until these games. Right. Um, I feel like accessibility to watching all of the Olympic events was was rather difficult. And what I mean by that is like, yes, you, you have the primetime Olympic coverage here in America. Obviously, mm-hmm. it's American based, so you get a lot of that. But like up until recently, now all of the uh, Olympic stuff is, at least for us, streamed on Peacock. And you can also watch it in various other places. But like I have access to the Peacock app, so I can watch all of it. Right. And like to me, that's what makes the Olympic Games really cool because I can watch, you know, this country versus this country that, I normally would not have access to. Right. So my qualm is that up until these games, mm. I didn't have that. And, I, and there wasn't as much accessibility to that. Well, I mean, I, I loved the way that it worked when we were little. Yeah. Like you had NBC that would have the primetime coverage at night, but right. then like throughout the day, if you watched uh, ESPN US, 8, the Ocho. I don't know if ESPN, I, maybe they did. Maybe I, they, I maybe they no had idea. some events, no but like idea. USA Network yeah. uh, would would cover stuff all day long that's true and i think tbs was the other one that would cover stuff all day long and and it was always like just random stuff that was not over there but like they always saved the 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 prime the time stuff for things. nbc yeah. yeah what what i hate about it the uh, at these games, these games is um <laughs> it's so much better when it is in your time zone absolutely because you're watching it all happen live yeah like I totally got spoiled the other day because they put that shit out there right away that the team women's team oh, the gymnastics, gymnastics won yeah. i got spoiled on that yeah at like you know noon sure local time and then watched it at night and was already you know like there's there's no anticipation of who's gonna win is yeah. not like it used to be and that, that's what i'm when saying you didn't know well see already. for me like the way when we were younger the way it worked <clears throat> obviously if it's not in your time zone all of those things are happening and you're not gonna know that until you watch it you watch it yeah but now, how media and news works, you're gonna if you, unless you're just you know barring all of it, right. you're gonna know right when it happens. Right. So that's what I actually like now is that I can watch those things in real time. If I if I have the ability to, I can watch them in real time. Could but, could you have? Could you have watched the women's? Yeah, I did team actually, finals mm-hmm. when it happened live. Yeah, you didn't on watch the, it on the prime time. Nope, I watched it live. Oh, cool. Yeah. The again, Drip and Stone sponsored by the Peacock app by NBC. Wow. Uh, yeah. Uh, you know, we're, we're making big, rising. yeah, big money. Yeah. Anyway, uh, surprised didn't get us to go over there. They we offered, were already over well, there. Well, they offered, but I said let Snoop have his day. Uh, yeah, which made sense. Let him have his day. He, he's yeah, he's Snoop. <laughs> well, you know, more people know that drip. was too generous of you. You you should have <sighs> taken off on it. Yeah. We could be in Paris right now. I know. Anyway, yeah, still love it though. Yeah, me too. I yeah. really do, and and I like. Uh, as much, you know, people always have their opinions surrounding all of these things, but I, I like that this is something collectively that we can kind of all agree is good. Yeah. Like, let's do this. Like yeah. there's, there's, you know, what, what's at stake here? Nothing other yeah. than just 
I mean, well, funsies. I mean, a lot of money. Well, be, sure. So I, but, but I mean, like, you know, this is not a life and death situation. Right. Unless you're the North Korean team. Right. Uh, and you lose to China, then you're fucked. Yeah. I'm kidding. <laughs> I hope I'm kidding. <laughs> you know uh, what I mean? Like, this is not life and death situation. This is like sport. Yeah. And like, yes, I recognize. I say there's nothing at stake. I recognize there's a lot at stake. But like, it's all in the name of sport. Yeah. And I think that's cool. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah. You got anything else? I don't think so. Uh, we have nothing left in our glasses either. Now nah, we emptied these real quick. Yeah. You want to go make another one? Okay. Okay. Cool. Well, uh, let's wrap this up and then we'll go make another one. Let's do it. All right. Well, we'd love to know what do you think about the Paris Olympics? Yeah. And what do you think about margaritas? Ooh. You ever had one? Have you had a margarita? They are at a the rare Olympics? drink. Oh <laughs> man, a Parisian margarita. Right. Because if there's a, a Olympics in Scotland, it's not going to be good. <laughs> the margaritas aren't going to go. Well. A lousy margarita. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Uh, what is your favorite Olympic sport? And what's your favorite version of a margarita? Yeah. And what's the Olympic sport that you just you watched and you were so surprised that you actually loved? Yeah. And what was that margarita that you didn't think it'd be good, but you had it and it just blew your socks off? Yeah, it's not in Scotland. I can it tell you that. It might have been in Scotland. <laughs> it was not in Scotland. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, Scotland. I love you, but uh, your margarita suck. They're in Edinburgh. Yeah. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> you can get in touch with us through email. It's drepandstone at gmail.com. You can also get in touch with us through social media. It's a margarita. Yeah. But it's got Guinness in it. Because you're in Ireland? Yeah. But would they make a good margarita? Do you have good margaritas in Ireland? I don't think I had a margarita in Ireland. Ugh. It's always one word, Drep and Stone. D-R-E-P and Stone. Wherever you're socializing your media, we're socializing some there also. And you should uh, check it out and, you know... Let us know. Yeah, because we're active on that thing. We're doing a lot of cool, fun stuff. Yeah. And we'd love it if you support the podcast. You can do so a couple ways. First of all, tell someone about Dreb and Stone. Whisper it in that ear. Oh, yeah. Second of all, find us on Patreon. It's patreon.com slash Dreb and Stone. Helps keep the lights on and the machines working. And if you want to get yourself something special and also help support the podcast, you can do so through Flaviar. That's flaviar.com. Use the code DSP10 upon checkout and you get yourself some money saved. Hook yourself up. Yeah. On that note. On that note. Hey, buddy. Hey, buddy. May your glass overflow. And your Olympic ass never show. This is going to be pretty. Not bad. Cheers, buddy. Cheers.